The hive cluster is under attack. Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Uh, today, it's going to be Sulky versus Best here on Polypoid. Woo, it's going to be a long macro game. We got Gamo watching here today and Sack, bottom left, going to be our Zerg player. It is Sulky! Man, I love this guy. And in the top left, it's going to be Best, an excellent Protoss player. Whew. So Sulky is having some money problems last time I checked, so I'll put a link in the description to his uh, stream if you want to watch him play Brood War Live. We got Terror the Overlord moving out in the wrong direction. Yes, I know. But uh, just don't tell Sulky that, okay? All right. So, hallucinated Kakaru flying overhead. It will be gone in just a couple seconds here. Oh, into the fog of war it goes. All the hallucinated Kakaru are gone now. Ah, fare thee well, hallucinated Kakaru. We will miss you. Probe scout in the wrong way is best. And what's your first building going to be here? Maybe a Nexus first? Mm -hmm. uh. Overpool opening here from Sulky. Fairly economic. Fairly safe. Fairly aggressive, just middle of the road, road there, so yeah. Open and forge, because he has no idea what Sulky is doing. The forge opening is very, very safe. Drone says, aha, I see. See what a probe is up to here. You're gonna try to block my attempt to get an expansion, aren't you? No, you're just gonna scout? Okay, cool. Hurry, why are you are you trying to kill this probe so you don't You had an opening to throw Ah! Uh, there was an opening to do that a second ago, man. Come on, Soul Key. I mean it's a 2v1 here. This is wasting a ton of mining time. This is delaying the expansion. Finally it goes down at like 27. What? Blah! Man, 220. 220 on that expansion. Rough stuff, but. Settling's on the way to get this probe chased out of here on the other side of cannons up because the pool is already done. And again, cannons just safe. It's just how we do things here in Protossville. Anywho, yeah, Sulky Best, an excellent, excellent game. This is an RJB replay. I don't know if I should like put an RJB stamp on the thumbnail for games that are sent directly to me by RJB because they are guaranteed to be awesome in some way not that every game i cast you know doesn't have a level of awesome to it because everything i cast is brood war on this channel and brood war is great third base coming up by the way from soul key here but yeah rgb games are just a little extra good in some way because he watched the replay he said this is something that falcon needs to cast now sends it over so check him out youtube.com slash at rjb underscore tv Subscribe to him. Let him know that Falcon sent you. Tell him thanks for all the incredible content that he provides and has provided for low these many years. He's an awesome, 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 very, very good friend of StarCraft and a very excellent friend of the channel. Hydralisk Den opening. Here from our Zerg player. Maybe a Hydra bust in the future. We've seen that a few thousand times in our history of watching StarCraft, haven't we? This probe needs to see if a bunch of lings are coming out, or really wants to know if there's a lair coming up, but that's not, this is, you know, this ling placement here. The fact that there's two lings, man, look how much HP, it's got all of its HP though, man, this drone. Been making liberal use of its shield regeneration abilities here. Oh, trying to get up, no, takes, the oh, beautiful stop there from Sulky. You're not seeing there's not a lair, you're not seeing there's a hydralisk den down, you're gonna have to guess what I'm up to, bucko. That's what Soul Key just said over Discord when they were chatting with each other. In Korean, of course. I don't know what bucko is in Korean, but I bet it, I bet there's a decent translation for it. Zealot up at the third base. Ah, it does get behind the mineral line, which is super annoying. Second Zealot coming down, maybe going into the natural. But overall, Zealot pressure. Not scouting, not able to get into that main base and see what's going on here. Hydras are going to start popping out eventually here, though, right? Production tab says no, drones. And Hydra speed. Are we hiding it? 
Ah, Zealot comes into the third base. Yep, forcing a ton of lings to spawn. Oh my gosh, they're both still alive. The Zealot, okay, only two kills. Finally down. Get, I think got a third one there, and my goodness. Using drones to get back here. I'm trying to force more lings back into this position. So that Zealot gets four kills before it dies, which is pretty much all it could expect, honestly. Another Zealot comes into the natural, wanders right into the main. This is not wandering, this is purposefully striding. I'm gonna see the lack of a lair. I'm gonna see the Hydralisk Den. I'm gonna say, okay, let's start going into Storm. Citadel of Anoon is on the way. That was gonna be normal anyway, but definitely, as soon as that thing finishes, we're gonna get to Templar Archives. Dude, this is amazing stuff out of best. I'm impressed by this, I really am. Hydralisk, drones fighting. Zealot's got a couple kills. A couple drones go down there. Another Zealot comes into the third. I mean, this is, my gosh, full evacuation of drones from the third base, heading over to the, uh, the natural instead. And then the Hydra is gonna try to bust on in here. One cannon gets a shot off before it dies. It warps in, gets one shot off, and then it dies. That's hilarious stuff. So just a little bit of Hydra pressure. Not a massive bust, but trying to save this Overlord. Beautiful stuff there by the Hydras. I do really prefer Hydra openings compared to Spire openings, but man, Spire openings are the popular thing in this matchup, aren't they? Definitely, definitely the case. So are we serious about Corsairs today best? The answer is not really. Not getting plus one air weapons. Not really getting that many Corsairs either. Call oh, the Zealot into the third base. It's so awesome. It's like, la, 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 let me have you worry about this instead of uh, worrying about busting my front here. Which, okay, Hydra's trying to position where they can knock down this gateway. They can maybe find position where he can take down that forge too. He's trying to find it. Oh, but that upgrade's going to finish. So that plus one attack finishing. Speed is on the way. And actually not at Templar Archives. I'm a little surprised by this. Basically, oh, there it is. But I mean, eh, gonna have to defend with speed lots, which are great against hiders. Not speedy yet, though, huh? And these cannons, dude, busting down that pylon would be sick. Is that doable with a number of zealots out here? The slow zealots? I think running. Eh, but all the cannons are firing at you the whole time, too. Nah, so the forge is going to die here, unless these zealots want to run out and chase these dudes away. But it's hard to run out without your leg enhancements upgrade. Corsair flying around to see what's what. Sees macro hatch, macro hatch, macro hatch galore. Evolution chamber here too. And the forge dies. Further upgrades will have to come from a separate forge being produced anytime now. Let's see. Lurker aspect? Nope. Not yet because the lair's not done. On the other side, a robotics facility. High Templar. Ooh, Dark Templar in production here too. So lair just about complete. Zealot's got their speed upgrade. Let's chase these hiders away, boys. That's what they say in their Protossi language, I suppose. Yeah, Storm's coming in here too, so we're just gonna see Hydras, Speedlots, Storm, all that pretty standard stuff around the 10 minute mark of a PVZ from Elite players. So this Macro Hatch, Macro Hatch, Macro Hatch stuff here, it's just, we don't see it in every PVZ. We don't see it in every TVZ, but in the games we do, it feels like the Zergs have a much better chance of winning. They just seem to have unending numbers of units and army units and that, I mean, why? Because they have the macro hatches. That's the that's the spirit of the whole thing. Lurker aspect on the way. Faster overlord movement coming in here to aspire at eight and a half minutes for our Zerg player. High Templar, Shuttle, Storm Drop's gonna be in the future. DT moving down. Very brave, completely unsupported DT here. It's not like there's a giant Corsair ball. So Zealot's distracting. And then DT slips right on into the main base. I like that a lot. Hydras can deal with that number of zealots. And yeah, DT gets into this mineral line. No spores, no overlords at all in this base. DT casually has two kills already. Trying to hack away at an egg that a Hydralisk would be coming out of. But nope, can't. Ah, uh, forces a cancel on that Hydralisk. Oh, gosh. He's like, well, if no one's coming to stop me, Hydralisk den. Die, the overlords slow it. Ooh, Maelstrom, nice. Yeah, Overlord speed would be nice, but it's, you know, it takes a while. It's almost done. Zealots try to come into the third. There's a response from Solky. He's ready for that one. This dude, he's only got two kills, but he did force a cancel on a Hydralisk. He done. He backs into a corner, or gets backed into a corner and dies. Here comes a Storm Drop, though. Worker count 44 for the Zerg player. Not anymore, it's not. 
Now it's 37. Ta-da! It's like a magic trick. And then you pick them up. And the zealots are like, no, don't come down here and protect your drones. And then by the time the hiders get in here, the shuttle's out of there because sweet, sweet play there from Best. Really, really nice play. Dark Archon doing the Dark archon -y things here. Maybe worried about Mutalisks? What with the Spire and all, which uh, is right here, which was scouted by the DT. He's like, okay, a Maelstrom. Maelstrom on a bunch of Mutals would be great. But at this point, Soul Key is not making any Mutalisks. But the preparations sure seem like best is ready for him. Which, you know what? Better to be safe and prepared against Mutas than be caught entirely by surprise against Mutas and die. It's my personal philosophy anyway. You know, just being ready. Observatory coming in because he knows the lurkers are out. Fourth base. There you go. Fourth base here from Soul Key. Checking to make sure there's not a quick easy third here from best in that location or this location. Actually, you know what? This one is fine to expand to. Soul Key's not keeping an eye on that whatsoever. And he's pulled most of his army back for some reason. I don't know. I, have, I like the contain that he had going, to be honest. But melee attack upgrade and Carapace in the future here. These links currently are at 0, zero But they've got upgrades in that production tab. The Hiders have plus one missile. They'll get that plus one ground Carapace upgrade. They share with the Lings and the Lurkers and the Ultralisks. Queen's Nest coming in from Soul Key too, so he's moving into that Hive Tech. He's going to get Adrenal. He's going to get Dark Swarm. He's going to get Plague, which is really good against this heavy gateway composition that Best is rolling with here. Lings are like, are you expanding? Maybe. You're moving your army out as though perhaps, perhaps you are. We're going to keep an eye on that, say the Zerglings. But yeah, this fourth base really coming up completely unmolested by the Protoss player. Lings trying to pick off High Temp. Not really. Actually, the target fire there was pretty bad. Out of Soul Key. I don't think he killed a single High Templar. He did scout the DT, though. Actually, the DA. The Dark Archon, which is kind of cool to see in person if you're a Ling and then immediately die. Suppose. Hive timing here. About 12 minutes. Not super early, but not really late either. Corsair cruising down to the south. Doesn't want to catch any Scourge to the face. There's a couple Scourge out. That's what that Spire was mostly for. Was for the, like, one Corsair that exists in the game. It's got two kills. It's not, like... It's got 11 HP and 80 shields at the moment. So, pretty vulnerable to Scourge Attack is how I would characterize that. But yeah, just a reminder, hit that like button. Some people say, oh yeah, I always forget to hit the like button on your videos until you say in the cast. So, thanks for hitting the like button. Just helps the algorithm know that I'm here. Comments do the same thing. So, feel free to leave one. Doesn't matter what it is. I'll read it, too. I promise. I read every comment anyone ever makes on any of my videos. And quick plug for the Quick and Smart Pro Games that I posted last Saturday. Because it didn't get as many views as I was expecting it to. So, you know, if you like crazy stuff like worker, a worker rush out of nowhere. Or somebody faking a macro opening and then going into a really aggressive one base opener. Check it out. Check it out the thing from last week. Morphing in a lurker egg on the ramp to block this army out. Ling's trying to get a flank attack here. Dark Archon hasn't done anything yet. It really isn't a major threat here either. I don't know if there's enough Zerg. Oh, yeah, that egg is down. Let's go send the Zealots in here first. There are Lurkers in position. And, yeah, those Zealots are dead. So do you want to come in here? Do you have detection available to deal with the Lurkers? Yes, there is an OBS with this army. So the Lurkers are going to have to back out just a little bit. I'm waiting for reinforcements to maybe show up here from Sulky, But he's also sending a ton of Lings up. Adrenal is on the way for them boys. Not quite there yet. Yeah, Ling's against a pretty heavy Dragoon army. Not going to be too bad. Ling's against heavy Zealot compositions. Going to have a worse time. Yeah, the Ling's outnumbering these Zealots pretty heavily. Trying to get up into this base and shut this Nexus down. And by that I mean there's the Nexus. Yeah, if they had Adrenal, they'd probably be able to do it with the available time that they've got. But no Adrenal. They do have the plus one. Not quite enough to make it happen. Ling's... Trying to where you go, would it be a run by? Maybe jumping down into the mineral line at the third base would be good. Maybe just sniping an entire cannon. Not able to pull that off. Not enough links for that. Not enough upgrades for that. The Adrenal did kick in, though. Was it there for that attempt on the cannon kill? I don't know. Don't rightly know. More DTs in production here. The Dark Archon. Nope, Dark Archon's doing fine, thanks. Full energy. Well... Argus Talisman is actually how you get extra 250 full energy, but 200 to 200 is available right now for this guy. And he's got that Maelstrom. So I don't know if he's planning on using it on a group of Hydras or 
a bunch of lings as they try to jump in. The targets, you know, decent available targets here. It only works on biological units, which Zerg only has biological units, so that's why you see Dark Archons against Zerg more often than anything else. Lings sharking around, 1-1 one, one upgrades, Adrenal all ready for him. Scourge patrolling back and forth just in case a drop tries to come down and wipe out some more of those workers. I mean, Soul Keys back up to 53 drones to 57 workers here for our guy, Best. Best is at four bases. And four basing for the Zerg here, too. Trying to get a fifth base in the bottom right. We'll see if he can pull that one off. Yeah, Adrenalings, man. Arr, get out of here, Dragoon. Rom, 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 rom. Not quite enough for it, honestly. Great Storm. Oh, a that was it. That was the Maelstrom Storm combo. Just on, like, I don't know, eight lings or so. Nothing too crazy. Nothing too game-changing. But you might as well use your energy on your unit if it's got full energy available, right? Right. Yeah. Adrenalings, man. Pretty good stuff here. But when you're outnumbered, three to one by Dragoons, even if you're great against Dragoons, you're still going to die. It is a lesson to remember. And this bottom right base is canceled. Drone runs for it. Observer chases. Yeah, this is looking pretty good for Bass. He's in a great position. 175 to 131 supply. I know a lot of this is Hydras and a lot of this is Lurkers. Oh, look at this sunken setup. Solky is kind of playing defensively a little bit. I guess maybe he's just trying to get up to Plague. Obviously, the consume upgrade is done. You don't start. You really don't start Plague unless consume is complete. Historically... Ling sniped the probe that was going to try to throw up a nexus on this top right corner too. Best's macro is getting into overdrive here. He's expanding a lot. Map control belongs to the Protoss player. Best, good snipe on a Scourge there. Left side expansion. Attempt here from Solki, but again, pretty exposed. There are some lurkers here, but without Dark Swarm protecting them, a Dragoon army can easily overpower them and take that base out. So Best at 16 minutes, I would argue, is doing just fine. He's having a pretty good time, honestly. Yeah, these Lings didn't get anything accomplished whatsoever. Not quite enough of them to do it, I would say. Good storm on the Lurkers. And just all you need right now is Dragoons on those Lurkers. Dragoons are great against Lurks. It's the Dragoons of the Dark Swarm that are nigh impossible for Protoss players to deal with. And that's what they complain about. Oh, these shuttles are both dead. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so, wow. Uh, that was completely shut down. Sulky was ready for that. Yeah, the Hydra is in position. And like I said, this base. Did he let that finish? He might have let that finish. Ah, Dark Swarm is here. Quick. Great Maelstrom, though. Sick Maelstrom. And the Storm combo coming in there, too. Yeah. <laughs> Not bad. But still got to pull back. Too many Lings. Very mean with 2-2 upgrades now. High Templar, maybe going to get taken down. Lings, no, coming back around to save this fifth base. That is the most important thing to happen. And they do. Those Dragoons are really no match for 2-2 Lings. The Adrenal, just a tough position for them to be in. This fifth base coming up now, however, from best is almost complete. And pretty nice, a pretty fancy place to be. Reavers in production, as in every ZVP. If you get Reavers, you get your chances of in winning the game go up pretty immensely. Yeah, man. Reavers with a little bit of Zealot support. Gonna do just fine, honestly. I like it. I like it a lot here. And Storm on the Lurkers as... Oh, my gosh. Maelstrom. Oh, Maelstrom catches a Lurker as it's burrowing. We got a burrowed Maelstrom to Lurker there. That doesn't... That's... Oh, I've never seen... I don't know if that's actually a thing that's ever been seen before. That was nuts. Either way, man, RJB sends us Maelstrom games, really long PVZs. Ah, oh, the Dark Archon got killed by Lings. Rough stuff. And this Archon is not coming up as more and more Lings join their friends to wipe it out. So still 142 to 116 supply right now in favor of the Protoss. But all the ingredients are there for the Zerg now. Got the Plague, got the Dark Swarm, got the Consume, got the Lurker Hydra, Ling, got the Adrenal. Like, those are the things you need to defeat this particular composition that best is rolling with here. It's not a ton of Archons. It's a lot of Zealots and Dragoons. Plague's going to be good against all of that. And let's see how. Let's see how this is going to work out. I keep thinking... Yeah, trying to expand down this way, but... Best is keeping close tabs on this bottom right-hand corner. Soul Key is going to have a hard time taking it without really putting effort into it here. This base... Oh, man. Two Sunkins and a handful of Lynx. 
Not enough to save this. Reinforcing units are cruising in, trying to get a flank attack here, jumping down on top of the High Templar. If those guys are wiped out, every army is lessened in power with a lack of High Templar there. But there's one that snuck down. He's down here at the 6 o'clock. Is there enough Protoss here? Oh, Scourge flying over Archons and Dragoons. What are you even doing here, guys? Looking for OBS would be my guess, but you missed them. The OBS were right there. Yeah, this hatch is probably just going to die. It's not a giant army here for the Protoss, but by golly. You're going to trickle in Lings against 212 Zealots. Just a few at a time. It's not really going to go all that well. Okay, but more and more Zerg showing up. And he does save the base. Base down to 800 HP, about three quarters health. But at the end of the day, he sends enough to do what he needed to do. Reaver drop. Do, 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 do. Or the Reaver is wandering directly out into Sunken hits, though. Don't want to do that at all. Ow. I think Sunken just wiped that Reaver out. Yeah, it's just the pathing there. Blech. Well, yeah, that was rough. I, oh, nice pickup on the drones to keep them alive. That was really sick. Oh, there are so many sick plays in this game. Oh, man, RJB sends me the best stuff. He really does. We got super cool reaver drop stuff. A sick pick up the drones with the reaver drop stuff. We got a burrowed maelstrom lurker, which is nuts. So, like super crazy weird stuff. We're kind of just crossing in the middle here. Zealots heading bottom right, and the Zerg army was heading top right, and they met right here in the middle. And these lings just have the upgrades to fight against these zealots. The zealots kind of had, even with the three two two man. Wow. They had the upper hand through the first 10, 15 minutes of this game. Yes. Is that a lurker drop attempt? <laughs> it might have been a lurker drop attempt. But it's on a base that's already mined out. Like, I don't know what exactly you're trying to accomplish there. Maybe just scouting more than anything else. But I don't... The only real thing the Zerg Protoss player can do here is just go into a mass Archon transition, right? That'd be the thing you kind of want to keep an eye out for. Plague! Ooh! Great Plague. Dark Swarm there as well. But kind of protecting the Zealots against these Hydras. What an engagement, though. Flanking down. Storms catching everything. Protoss taking some hits. Another Plague goes down. Everybody plagued coming up this ramp to try to wipe out this base. 9 o'clock position for the Zerg in a lot of trouble now. Lurker's trying to burrow in. Storms catching him pretty early. Obs gets sniped. But you don't need detection to uh, storm a lurker that you know where it is under the ground. Man, Soul Key just... Oh, man. High Templar down. High Templar down. DT down. Soul Key again. Just kind of barely having enough to hold on in saving his bases. Not too shabby for him, honestly. Kind of surprised this base doesn't exist yet from Best, but he doesn't have a ton of cash just to throw at a Nexus at the moment. He's spending it very, very well. More OBS, more shuttles, more Dragoons all the time here. Yeah, little bits of army all over the place here. This is StarCraft at its best. Oh no! High Templar lagging behind. Oh, forced to storm and try to save themselves, but that didn't work. It rarely does. Reaver Shot takes out a single Hydralisk. FU in particular says that Reaver. Unloads it in a bit of a safety location here. Really wants to take down this 6 o'clock base for the Zerg player. Soul Key best does. This is a knockdown drag him out engagement number two at this location today. Scourge takes down one of the OBS. The other OBS is running. Look at it, Juke. Look at it. Juking. Nope. OBS down. All right. So Reaver... Again, amazing. Oh, my gosh. Against Lings, but the defense here. You know what's allowing Solki to do this? Those macro hatches. He's able to make seven sets of Lings, two hiders at a time. I mean, a lot of the uh, <laughs> the limiting factors here for Solki is cash. Both players are spending their money extremely well. But, yeah, macro. look at these macro hatches. There's one here. There's three out here. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's nuts. Now, this base... High Templar at it. No Reaver at it. Oh, he's going to drop. He's got the drop. We know he's got the drops because he did it to save these drones over here a minute ago. Remember? Reaver. Ah, oh, takes down two Lurker eggs. That's pretty sick stuff. If you're going to try to unload, and he is. Okay. This is what the storms are for. Man, Reaver Storm is completely shutting this drop attempt down. Sulky has to flee. 
in shame, bringing a handful of more units up this way. He really wants to kill this base, but will he be allowed to is the question. This man, is this game getting an epic tag? I just, it's been really, really good so far. It's been so good so far. Great storms, lings, trying to find something to do. Doesn't really work out for them in the end, does it? No. Nope. Lurkers in production. Hey, take it to sixth base. Here is Soul Keep down bottom right. He's kind of got map control, so I can see why he feels safe to do that. Zerglings. Ah, Plague did catch the Reaver. I was wondering if he got inside the shuttle before that happened, but nope. Definitely not. Okay, so never mind. Map control does not belong to the Zerg player. Best is just casually strolling across the entire thing. I mean, sure. Is he running into Zerglings? Yes. Are his Plague Zealots not doing super well against those Zerglings? Absolutely. Does he still have Reavers and Archons and Storm available for these Zerglings? Yes. Without a doubt. God, Plague on an Archon that's morphing in is always funny to me. Oh, the OBS or the shuttle died. That shuttle 100% had a Reaver in it. One Reaver was on the ground. He dead because he got plagued too. And Hydras are generally the answer to Archons. Especially if they're not attacking. There we go. Finally, he's attacking, but he done. Just did not come into the world with enough shields to survive any kind of an attack, really. Yeah, this is... Man, more Zealots streaming across the map. Feel better if you can plague them first and then engage with these numbers. Good snipe on High Templar there, though. Zealots ruff, 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 running down to try to wipe out this base. I imagine they're going to take a plague to the face. Yeah, that Defiler reaction time needs to be pretty good. There's a... Yeah, it's a fine plague. Both Defilers die. Obs gets sniped. Zealot, Reaver against this heavy Ling style. Reaver dies. Not a single shot. That's not good. That's terrible. All oh, these lings, though, they're just survivors, man. High Templar after High Templar dying, Zealot after Zealot dying. Adrenal is one of the greatest things in all of StarCraft. One of the more powerful upgrades that we've got. Look at him just going to... This is... Yeah, Zealot Archon, man. Not going to work out for you in the end. Not when the lings have these upgrades. Not when a Plague is available. Another shuttle coming in for our Protoss player best. He's taken a good chunk of the top of the map. Now, if he wants to win this game, and the longer it goes on, and the more he needs this base, the more he needs this base. These are going to be key locations for him to expand to if he's going to be able to win this thing. But for now, I think he's pretty happy to saturate his top right. I would be too. Understandable emotion there. Scourge hunting for OBS as they do. But you got to have an Overlord with you. Gosh, more High Templar snipe. Good Storm Dodge there. Storm Dodge come back. Ah, comes back in. Gets gets the High Templar. Sulky's playing extremely well. This is a very evenly matched game. 130 to 120 supply at this stage of the game. I think Bess is feeling all right. He's not maxed out, right? This has been incredibly scrappy. One of the more scraptastic. 28 minute games we've seen. Nobody's really been maxed out today. I feel like it's been constant engagements everywhere. Solkey's managed to keep his bases alive. He did get one canceled. Yeah, he tried to expand down here and got it canceled. There's still a drone in this locale if he wants to maybe try to get a hatchery in this area, but at the same time, Lurker drop top right. Probes get pulled down here. Storm finishes them off. Doesn't really accomplish a lot there. Nicely done by Bass. Good awareness on that one. So yeah, he's gonna, yep, gonna take this bottom right. So at this stage, this base is important for the Zerg player, and this base is important for the Zerg player, too. If the Protoss gets both of those, he's going to be in a uh, really big, big bag of trouble. Yeah, High Templar really don't want to have to be using their storms in the middle of the map on small packs of Lings. So the fact, even if the Lings aren't picking off those High Templar, it's okay. Man, Reavers, Archon, Storm, the highly... Highly, holy triumvirate of splash damage for Protoss. I mean, Corsairs are in that ball too, but there's not much for them to do today. Anyway, my gosh, the Ling control groups here, dodging storms, flanking, coming around for full surrounds. Not bad. This is not even like a giant, huge, scary Zerg army. It's just enough of a Zerg army 
to chase the enough of Best's army that he's got sitting here, right? That's what this whole game has been. Best shows up with an army that's not a maxed out, like, incredibly difficult to deal with army. But then Solki doesn't exactly have a maxed out, difficult to deal with Zerg army. So it's just been two groups of... My gosh, look at that storm. That synchronized storm like that. How did he do that? I guess when you have 300 APM, you can do a lot of stuff. And that was one of them. Get those storms down so they look like they came out at the exact same time. Blanketing that area. Yeah, it's been a pretty safe game for bases today. Not many bases have died. This Nexus took some chomping earlier, didn't die. This base, some chomping. This base, some chomping, didn't die. That's I, that's part of why we're at 30 minutes and nobody's really got the upper hand yet, which is weird. It's a it's pretty rare for a StarCraft game to be 30 minutes and nobody really. Oh my gosh, that's so big. Soul Key is just absolutely on fire killing High Templar today. Not an easy thing to do. It's tough when one of the players is blue because critters are blue and I keep thinking this is an overlord dropping something up here but it's just a Kakaru. Yeah, once again, here comes Soul Key. Really wants this Nexus dead, but Best wants it alive in the worst way, too. Yeah, this Archon stuff, pretty good against these Lurkers, especially not great against the Hydras, and full surrounds by Ling's base stays alive. Cannons aren't even touched at all. Soul Key might need to rethink his strategy of how he's going to do. What are these Ling's going to do? Hon no, but honestly, what are these Ling's going to do? Wait for your friends. Four lings aren't going to do anything at this stage of the game. Not not against bases that have cannons. Maybe against completely undefended bases, but best is too smart for that. Not going to happen, you know? Yeah, this base is big. Scourge watching it. Zealots watching it. This base too. Observer watching it. If Sulky goes for it, it's going to be nice for the Zerg player, but I think he needs that and this one if he's going to win this game. That's effectively splitting the map well, in half and giving him one extra base on the right, which... Is one extra base enough in a 45-minute game, right? Don't know. Supply blocked is Sulky. 133 supply out there. They're 158. Look at this body blocking. I don't think they even know the DT is there necessarily. Ooh, he finds a couple Defilers to wipe out. That, I mean, if that's all you do as a Dark Templar, but he's got 13 kills. He's like, yeah, mission accomplished. Let's get out of here. And the Lings are like, oh, yeah? Oh, they tried to block him. Couldn't do it. Doesn't matter. He makes it out. Dude, that is a, wow, 13 kill DT, and at least two of them are Defilers on the kills there. Impressive stuff. Yeah, a lot of mined out bases right now. A lot of looking at bases with no mineral patches at all on them. Solki taking the gas in his bottom right hand base. Yeah, I think it comes down to this. If Best takes it, then Best wins. If nobody takes it, Best wins. And if Solki takes it, Solki's got a good chance to win. But I don't know if I feel particularly great about those chances, even if he gets that right side 3 o'clock. He hasn't killed any Protoss bases today. None. I mean, that is Best's doing. He's got Reavers and Cannons or Cannons and High Templar, and that's what you need. That's how you deal with pretty much any kind of an attack coming into one of your bases. Probably going to be Lings, probably going to be Dark Swarm, Hiders and stuff, but Reavers and Cannons and High Templar are going to deal with all of that, no problem. So now that there's been a bit of a lull in the action, both players are effectively maxed out. Not technically maxed out, but gosh darn close enough, I would say. If you're over 190 supply, 185 supply and higher, generally, I feel like 185 and up is considered maxed out for me and Brood War. And they are both well above that supply number. Just small groups of Ling sharking around right now. I don't 
I don't see Sulky going into Ultralisks. The reaver count is too high for that. I think, anyway. It's another attempted drop into the main base. I just... I don't know what the play is here. I really don't from Sulky. Like, what? You're going to kill... The I guess you wipe out the gateways, slow down the production of best, and roll with that? Oh, boy. Look who's taking this right side base. Look what I... What did I say three minutes ago? He who holds this base is very important. Yeah, not enough links to shut it down. Doing some damage, though. More links. Okay, here we go. Here's a big concerted attempt on this base. Plague Dark Swarm is up. There are like six Reavers here, though. I don't see your chances of success being super high. Zerg player, Soul Key. And by golly, look at that. It wasn't. <laughs> yeah. If you're struggling, if you're struggling defending your bases against Zerg, this is it. This is the Cannon Reaver High Templar Trifecta. Really tough for a Zerg player to break this. If your storms are good and your reaver hits are good, which, you know, not a guarantee at your level of Starcraft, probably, or mine, but at this level, yes. Okay, this is it. If Bess holds this, it's over. Like, I don't, I do not see Soul Key with a path forward here whatsoever, but this game's not over. Lurkers just walking through storms. Ling's trying to jump on this pretty bruised up base. While everybody's dealing with the lurkers on the right side, Dark Swarm up, cannons getting wiped out. Uh, the cannons dying means future attacks are going to be more effective for sure. Now they're focusing on the Nexus. Is this the first base kill? Going to get it? No, not going to get it. Too many Archons, too many DTs. Shutting that down. Reavers shooting whatever's inside the Dark Swarm or, you know, just outside the Dark Swarm, which, ouch. That was a bit of a mistake there from Soul Key. Base survives. It's been significantly under pressure here today, but surviving. Minchul down about 15 supply right now. Oh, nice, nice saving that shuttle from certain death. More lings, more hydras trying to jump in, wipe out this. Okay, I think they're going to get the Nexus now. Oh, they got distracted by the Reaver, and the Reaver killed them. Okay, yo, this is amazing stuff. Yeah, the Archons still do damage in there. The Hydras don't. If everyone's in the Dark Swarm, the Hydras aren't doing any damage. Yeah, man, I think Best has this thing. 166 to 141 supply. It's been a lot of concerted effort to take down this base. It hasn't happened. Still rolling in. Still can't quite take it down. The storms are disgusting. Archons are dying. Reaver shots are key right now. There's a good one. Taking down a lurker. DT chasing away a defiler from the scene of the crime. Snipes it. How many defilers have died today? A lot. How many High Templar have died today? Also a lot. It's not been a great day to be a spellcaster or really any kind of an attacking unit. A lot of units have died in this match. A ton. The defense of this base has been 300-esque from best right now. He's only got a couple reavers, three reavers remaining instead of the six he had earlier, but reinforcements keep streaming over from the main base. Some of them are kind of getting caught out. But I think best is just barely holding on here. Both players have just had a knack for that, and the longer best has this right side at 3 o'clock position... I think the bigger his chances are of winning. I don't know if you guys are sports ball fans at all, but ESPN does this kind of percent chance of one team winning the game tracker. That is like the most awkward way of expressing that idea that I just pulled out. But basically it shows you as the game goes along what percent chance each team has of winning the game. And right now I think it's creeping up into best side of that graph. Putting him at like a 75-80% chance of winning. Killing these two Reavers. Okay, nice. The Plague Reavers die. Nexus goes down. Okay, so Solki threw like 800 units at that thing. Finally got it to die. It's got to feel pretty good about that one. That was awesome. Solki down 150 to 115 supply here. His cash levels are never super hot. That's because he hasn't spent much time at all being being supply capped. 
like, the way you develop a bank at this level of StarCraft is your supply cap for a few minutes, which Solki, maybe you've he, been there, but not for a long time. Yeah, this Reaver stuff. Protoss fans are just cheering with every Reaver hit, saying, yes, this, this is how you play PvZ. Reavers just crushing everything before them. Shuttle's keeping him alive. Scourge really want to kill those obs. Gets one of them. The other one stays alive thanks to Cannon Friends. Retaking this base. That Sulky put so much effort and so much time and so much energy and money into killing that thing. Man, Sulky again. I... Yeah. I gotta epic tag this just for the... Sheer amount of non-stop action that this game has showed us for StarCraft. Sheer amount of non-stop action, plus the Dark Archon, plus the insane Raver Reaver play, plus the defense of this base. Like, overall, this has just been insanely good. For both players to be at 120 supply effectively at 40 minutes is... That just shows how good this game has been. Archon down... Lings really want to kill these Reavers. That one dies. This one has also... No! 20 HP stays alive. Stays alive. Yeah. Best holding on to this and holding on to this. Man, if I'm Solki, I might go after this space a little bit harder, but... Solki seems a little fixated on killing this space. He's Dark Swarming, but there's DTs in there. There's Reavers in there. Look at this shuttle micro running away from the skirt. Oh, how far can you run, though? Pretty far, I would guess. Yeah. Reavers not living forever, but certainly making the most of the time available to them. Uh, like I said, Reaver down. Not invincible. The storms here from Best have been absolutely sick. Ling's inside the Dark Swarm, chomping away at this Nexus. Oh, they weren't chomping away at the Nexus. What were they chomping away at? Uh-oh. And suddenly this base looks like a 114 to 111 supply. Holy crap, this game. Yeah, both players starving economically the entire match, despite having the number of bases they do. DT sitting in here. 10 kills on that guy. Observer shows up, or Overlord shows up. Detection available. Base down. For the second time today. Alright. 108 to 105 supply. Archon has to survive a couple more hits. And does. 18 shields. 10 HP on that guy. More storms happening. More Archons morphing up. And a bug, big bunch of lurkers showing up here. Okay. He knows the High Templar count here is zero. And actually the top right doesn't have any High Templar either. This base does. Because this is more of a key to best winning this game. If he can storm and defend this base, he's got a better chance of winning this thing. Ling's rushing in. <laughs> Reavers, High Templar, Dark Swarm. Oh, he's bringing the Lurkers to this party. I don't know about this. I don't know about this. Ah! All right, so the Lurkers are really tough inside the Dark Swarm. I'm not going to dis... Oh, not going to argue against that. They're taking cannons out with them. Probes are dying all over the place. Okay, so this base dying puts Sulky into a pretty good spot. Dude, Sulky has lost 1,000 units in this game. Easy. It's going to be well over 1,000 today. It just is. That is what kind of match this has been. Okay, right side Nexus dies. High ground Nexus. Top right spawn goes down... I think it should have died for the second time a minute ago, but then Solki lost interest in it. And then rolled back around and took it down a couple minutes later. But suddenly it's 119 to 85 supply. Solki's up. I don't know how Solki has managed to do this with an economic disadvantage. I mean, yeah, he's got a couple bases he's still mining from, so maybe that's the big deal here. If we got to the point where people were mined out, then yes, the extra base here from Best would have been absolutely key to winning this match. But as it stands, Best is mined out. He's mined out. That's it. He doesn't have any mineral income at all. 
Zerg player, Soul Key, taking the right side. He's got this base. He's got this base. He's got two bases mining to zero bases mining. Best is trying to long distance mine from this high ground base. But, I, the, nope, Reavers without shuttle support. Actually, they're fine. Ah, oh, no. Never mind. That shuttle goes down. <laughs> oh, boy. That Reaver, creep, creep, creep it away. Get out of here. You stub it. Oh, simultaneous kill. Those Lings died and killed the Reaver. Okay. All right. That's it. That's your GG. Wow. For Soul Key to bust out that win, I thought for sure economically he was toast. And that's it. Best taps out. Soul Key is your victor in 45 minutes. GG. Holy epic. That was... That was probably one of the best EVPs I've ever seen. I honestly cannot believe, like, cannot believe that Soul Key came back and won that thing. Part of it is that he still had two bases mining. Part of it is that he kept his bases alive throughout the entire game when he was the defender today. And as the offensive player, I still think he threw away way too many resources to kill this base. But you know what? He got it, and that allowed him to get this base. And I don't know the best... Uh, it's hard to say best couldn't have played any better when he lost. But man, the Storms, the Reavers, the DTs and the Zealots to offset the Dark Swarm too. Never stopped making those. Really went away from Dragoons as the Dark Storms became more and more prevalent. He, he just gets it. He gets the win. Man, Sulky. 158 minerals in the bank. That's all he had. He had like 4,000 gas, yes, but man alive. Insane. Truly, truly, insanely, epically good ZVP there. I thought I thought Bess was going to win. Still an epic game, and then Sulky came back and won, making it even a more epic game. <sighs> wow. We saw a burrowed lurker with Maelstrom on it. We saw a nice Maelstrom Storm combo and a bunch of Lings. We saw Reavers versus <laughs> Lings for days. We saw Archons. We saw Hydralisks and Lurkers in. We saw DTs cutting down, cutting down Lings and cutting down Lurkers and cutting down Defilers. And yeah, Sulky just played so, so, so very, very well. And those macro hatches helped. 424,000 points for Soul Key today. 403,000 points from Best. Yeah. This... <laughs> it's a 2,000 produced unit game for the Zerg player and a 500 produced unit game for the Protoss. That is bonkers. That is a bonkers ratio. That Soul Key outproduced this hard. Oh, he made a bajillion lings, yes. But yeah, look at that unit's loss. 1,759 Zerg units died today. I knew it was way more than 1,000. Way more than 1,000. 1,759. So the kill-death ratio was 17 to 4. That's a 4 to 1. That is a more than 4 to 1 kill-death ratio that Best got in this game. And Sulky won. Because he outproduced him by a 5 to 1 ratio. That's crazy the macro that Solky displayed here today 43 to 6 on the killed raised you know killed buildings ratio pretty good for Solky too and then yeah this right here this blows my mind that best outspent Solky in this game by a thousand resources 1000 out of 105000 spent for both people he outspent the zerg he had a 4 to 1 kill death ratio and he lost that's got to be a tough pill to swallow. That's just got to be Soul Key being like, what? How? What? <laughs> how, how did that even happen? And it's because Soul Key had a ton of macro hatches. He microed his lings to the ends of the earth. Like, usually somebody makes 2,000 units, especially this many Zerglings against a Protoss, and they're just kind of like, Rah, like we're gonna throw him at the base, but he's dodging storms. He's trying to get surrounds on Reavers. He's sending in smaller groups at the Reavers instead of 20 at the same time because we know what that happens then with the 20 lings. <sighs> hard fought, hard fought match for sure. 
And someone had to come out on top, and this time it was Solky. So, seriously, well done. I I am over the moon at how good that PVZ was for your Saturday. Thank RJB too, man. He finds these for us. He deserves some applause. All right, cool. So that is going to be it for me today, though. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered and an epic game. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.